I'm Junpei Matsumoto from University of Taiwan, Japan. It's great honor to uh, speak to you uh, in, uh, today. I'd like to thank the uh, organizer for kindly inviting me. I will talk about the uh, USB source identification method. Uh, that means a uh, uh, method for discriminating uh, of, of which mouse in a group is vocalizing. <coughs> So, as we have seen in the previous lectures, social communication via ultrasound vocalization in mice and rats is a powerful experimental model to investigate biological mechanisms underlying social behavior and their deficit. However, it is not easy to identify which mice in a group emit a certain USB. <clears throat> because difference in acoustic feature of USB are insufficient for discriminating individuals. So you can uh, see here, this is actually coming from two different mice. <laughs> you cannot discriminate at all many. <laughs> and the USB are not associated with visually <laughs> uh, visible uh, movement, <laughs> like uh, uh, mouse opening in human. So uh, several approaches have been used to circumvent the social identification. One approach is uh, recording USB from an isolated animal. Then we don't need to worry about the source. <clears throat> However, in such situation, of course, the interaction of animal with USB cannot be studied. Another approach is devocalizing or anesthetizing animal, except for one in a group. But there is, of course, a question whether uh, the interaction we observe are normal or not, because uh, one animal cannot uh, vocalize. <clears throat> And uh, another approach is uh, observing a situation such as uh, uh, male and female interaction, where only one of the interacting animal mostly vocalizes. So. <clears throat> but since most uh, evidence for such uh, rules are obtained from the studies using a wild type animal of specific strains, it may not be guaranteed the rule are true across different strain and genotypes. <clears throat> Another approach is summing up USB from a group of individuals with the same property. But when we want to study further into the dynamic aspect, such as a correlation with neural activity, summing up may not work. So therefore, the social identification difficulty is actually a bottleneck for some studies. And if it become easy, uh, social identification should greatly facilitate studies on neurobiology of social behavior. <laughs> so uh, today I will talk about uh, our attempt at source identification in two different approaches. First is uh, source identification by record simultaneous recording of EMG, <laughs> uh, which we did uh, around eight years ago, uh, combined with the neural recording. And the second is a, a more convenient source identification by using a microphone array, which we published the method in the last year. So I will explain the first approach using EMG. For the source ID identification, we record a zero altenoid muscle which locate uh, inside the larynx and regulate the length of and tension of vocal cord and is active during USB in that. <clears throat> so in this study, we recorded the uh, amygdala neurons from freely interacting male rats. Neurons and EMG are recorded from the uh, wireless transmitter on the head. And uh, <clears throat> the ultrasound is recorded the ultrasound mic located above the recording arena. Uh, and four depth sensors were surrounded for uh, 3D tracking of rat. In this video, an example of behavior of male in this arena and their 3D tracking is shown. So uh, they often emit 50 kilohertz USB during such a playful interaction. And so uh, first we checked the relationship between EMG and USB. 
The data in this slide was obtained during the interaction of male and devocalized female to make sure the male subject was the source. What we found was the EMG activity was not always observed, especially in non-frequency modulated code. Uh, while nearly 99% of frequency modulated code were associated with the clear EMG activity like this. So we could identify the source of frequency modulated code by using EMG activity. This is an example of sound spectrogram and uh, EMG trace of two animals simultaneously decoded uh, from interacting males. The first two codes were assigned to the first lat, lat A because only the lat uh, EMG was active. But, but uh, uh, the following three uh, vocalization was not assigned because EMG was uh, active in both animals. So the last three were assigned to the another animal. <clears throat> so in this way, uh, 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 we uh, assign the vocalization and based on the assignment, we analyze the response of amygdala neuron to own and others USB. <clears throat> And uh, this uh, peri-event raster and histogram shows the uh, example response of a neuron. And the uh, <coughs> neuron respond to specifically to others' core, uh, not to the uh, own core. So, <coughs> and we, uh, we found many neurons in amygdala respond to uh, USPs, and uh, most of them are uh, responded to specifically to others' core. So this slide summarizes attempt of the uh, use of EMG. We could discriminate some USB based on EMG activities and found many neurons in amygdala respond to USB and their activity depend on the source. So considering that the amygdala is posted to be one of the most important brain regions for social behavior, these results underscore the importance of USB recording and source identification in the analysis of neural dynamics during social behavior. So, however, we have, as we have seen, there are limitations in source identification using EMGs. So, of course, it is invasive and technically uh, difficult, and the uh, uh, ratio of the identifi identified code was not very high, as I expected. Uh, originally, and it uh, is finally around 30% of the total vocalization in this study. <laughs> so uh, we tried another approach using a microphone array. Using multiple microphone, sound source location can be estimated based on the lag of the sound uh, arriving to the microphone. <laughs> So the sound localization system, those sound localization system for USB have already been suggested by some groups. But, sorry, yeah, but there were, uh, but here we tried to develop a new system to make it easier and more applicable. And in the previous system, microphones are uh, arranged surrounding the recording arena, <coughs> like this. And this setup requires the use of special arena with acoustic transparent wall for best performance. So it's best difficult to use a conventional plastic home cage, for example, <coughs> which is a, uh, and which is a good environment to observe the social behavior, such as parental behavior and sexual behavior. <coughs> and also computation time, uh, 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 took a little long time, uh, like six minutes per USB. <coughs> and this is our system named the USB CAM. We use a compact array uh, of four microphones next to the camera. And because uh, uh, we have a single sensor assembly on the top of the cage, it can be applied to a different environment, including the home cage. 
with a slight modification to uh, prevent sound reflection from wall. Another advantage is a faster processing. It takes 0.1 second per USB on average with a consumer PC, which is more than 1,000 times faster than previous system. <clears throat> and uh, this is a recording setup used in this study. So uh, this is a home cage, little customized for preventing sound reflection. And uh, we uh, put the home cage uh, with a uh, 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 mesh read uh, and as a sensor. And this slide shows an overview of processing in USB CAM. First, the sound spectrogram is calculated, and the pixel corresponding to the animal vocalization were detected using USB seg developed by Dr. Tachibana et al. In the recording from interacting animal, we, we sometimes uh, see the uh, multiple animal vocalization is overlap. So in the following step, we first uh, uh, First, the pixel corresponding to the USB are grouped into the separate, separate continuous segment. <clears throat> and then, uh, like this uh, colored segment, and then for each segment, we perform the source identification and uh, we get something like this. And finally, we integrate uh, those uh, uh, small uh, segments into a syllable uh, for each animal. So this slide explains the source identification algorithm. For the sound localization, we use uh, the beamforming technology. I would skip the detail of the technology. But finally, as a result, we can obtain the spatial spectrum like this, which is, is a sound power estimate of each location in the view. So after the sound localization, <clears throat> of course, the uh, uh, sound is, vocalization is assigned to the uh, uh, animal closest to the peak, but we also have to uh, calculate the confidence of the assignment. So to calculate the confidence of assignment, we uh, use the uh, uh, distance between animals and the difference between the power at the snout of each animal. And uh, based on the simulation uh, <laughs> performed with a single mouse experiment data, we can obtain the, uh, uh, this kind of lookup table uh, to calculate the confidence uh, in each case of uh, parameter. And uh, in this study, we use the confidence threshold uh, at 99%. So I show the example of sound localization US using the USB CAM. This video shows the sound localization of USB emitted from a single uh, C57 black six male mouse exploring females home case. The estimation sound location look good as the location are close to the snout of the mouse. And next, I show an example of sound source identification. <coughs> In the video, uh, male and female black six mouse were interacting in the cage. Uh, the below is a spectrogram where the USB segments are colored according to the identified source. So in the video, you can see most of the USB coming from the male. So I show another example. This is the interaction of two female ICR mouse. <coughs> Uh, you can see that both uh, mice are actively vocalizing. <clears throat> the segment colored with the black is the one whose confidence was less than 99%. The identification was good, except for the snout were very, very close, a very close. <clears throat> so, yeah, I show the result of performance that validation. This histogram shows the sound localization error, which are distance between snout and the peak spectrum 
measured with a single uh, mouse experiment data. The median error was around 1.6 centimeter. And this table shows a number of calls successfully assigned to one of the mice in different type of pair and trio in the same home case. The assignment ratio was uh, from 25 to 86%. It really depends on the conditions, but on average, uh, it was 60% in this case. So although this is not direct comparison, and those performance were comparable with the previous uh, distributed microphone array system. And uh, you know, uh, this is further uh, uh, improved uh, by the Bernard in the next speaker. And uh, uh, next, we apply the USB CAM to analyze acoustic communication in resident intruder paradigm in mice, uh, which is uh, one of the most popular tests for social behavior. In each experiment, an intruder mouse was put into a resident mouse phone cage and their behavior was recorded for three minutes. <coughs> we use a male and a female C57 Black 6 uh, mouse, B6 mouse, and ICR mouse. And these are bar graphs show uh, the result of rate of USB under different conditions. Title of each graph shows the strain and sex of the emitter animal. In the bottom, R means the resident, emitter was resident, I means the emitter was intruder. And VSF and M means the uh, sex of the interaction, interaction pattern. So uh, we found the male vocalized to female, uh, consistent with the previous report. We also found the previously unreported, uh, <coughs> unreported complex pattern of use of USB in ICR female mouse, as ICR female vocalized to male, <coughs> if they, uh, they are resident. And the uh, intruder ICR uh, vocalized when the partner is female. So in the following, we focus on the uh, ICR female data to analyze further on the effect of these different social contexts. So first, we compare the rate of USB during different behavior shown here. So we found the rate was highest when the emitter uh, snout was around the tail base, it's uh, uh, <clears throat> maybe associated with anogenital investigation. <clears throat> so this is uh, consistent with the previous study. <laughs> so when we perform the same analysis separately in each of the different social contexts, we found the <clears throat> rate were different across contexts, even when the mice was doing the same action. And next, we analyze the, whether the acoustic future of USB change depending on the social context. To this end, dimension reduction of the reconstructed syllable of each individual mice were performed using variational autoencoder method uh, developed by GoFinet et al. <laughs> and uh, here is the result of the dimension reduction you can see the different syllable shape uh, located in the different position in this feature space. These are example of the distribution of syllable shape in three ICR female mouse. The color indicates different social context. A different social context. <laughs> and, uh, uh, <clears throat> Sorry, uh, the, uh, we found uh, no clear change uh, depending on social context in this experiment. As you can see, all different color point locate uh, in similar point. Uh, but uh, we see the individual difference was very strong in, the, in terms of shareable shape. 
So I'd like to summarize my talk. We develop a USB cam, an acoustic camera system optimized for USB. It allows for application in social interaction in conventional home cage and possibly in other various apparatus, as well as fast processing of sound localization. Using USB cam, we found novel and complex use of USBs in female mouse and ICR strain and a resident into the paradigm. And such a simple <coughs> USB source identification system will greatly facilitate future study investigating neurobiology of social behavior using rat and mice. So, yeah, this is the uh, uh, last slide. So, finally, I would like to thank my collaborators, especially Ota Kano, Tomohiro Shibata, and Masahiro Kato for developing USB CAM and our lab members on the ground. Thank you very much. That was really excellent talk and uh, thank you. And so uh, I just realized that I using your videos uh, with the rack tracking, uh, you know, equipment <laughs> on my lecture, so. <laughs> All right, so uh, do we have any questions? Uh, audience, Marcus, uh, if, you, if you, yeah, I'm sorry for the inconvenience, but the, then the people online will see. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much for a great talk. Uh, I do have a um, non-technical question. Uh, I was surprised that in your videos and your spectrograms that there were calls overlapping quite often. And is that something you just wanted to highlight because it shows how good the technique is? Mm -hmm. Or is that something that you really see a lot? And if you see many overlapping calls, I wonder what that actually means in terms of communication. Isn't that a bit odd that two animals vocalize at the same time if the vocalizations are used for communication? Thank you for a very interesting question. So, uh, yeah, sorry. Do you want to show uh, some slides? Yeah. So, uh, this is actually a typical case. I mean, the uh, most uh, overlapping case. But I, I can show that the moment. Uh, show that. Uh, how the real distribution works. So, that last slide. Um, sorry. Sorry, sorry. I, I don't have here. So, sorry. Um, actually, uh, in the ICR female case, we, uh, on average, 10% was overlap. 10% of the whole vocalization was overlap. So it's the most uh, uh, overlapping case. So we, uh, in other conditions, we don't see much as it is. So, yeah. So, and we also try to analyze if there is uh, any difference uh, between overlap uh, uh, call and uh, non overlap call. But uh, maybe uh, now uh, we, we didn't find anything, maybe because of lack of the number of samples. So, we will try to pass it. Thank you. All right, so just a short uh, question from uh, from Zoom. Uh, how do you synchronize the video and uh, audio? Do you use equipment or just, you know, old style tapping? Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, that is a very simple. I use only the, uh, <clears throat> because the, uh, the uh, delay between the, uh, camera and the audio system was uh, almost constant. We I passed it to record the uh, delay between those uh, things and uh, use the same computer. I uh, start those uh, recording. So that uh, works well. Uh, 